Welcome back. Uh, today is Friday, the 16th of June, 2023. Uh, it is a little after 5 p.m. and it's 102 degrees and very high humidity. And I have made peace with the decision that I'm not going to do any building today. But I did want to make a video because I had an interesting question from uh, one of the viewers who wanted to know if I could give a little bit more deep detailed explanation on what's going on with this inver inverted fuel system, what it's all about. So give me just a minute to get resituated here and we'll talk about that. And then uh, we'll catch you on the next one where we actually do some airplane building. I've got uh, the tools and parts that I need now that I can finally finish up the vent line and close these things out. So that's coming up. But first we'll talk about inverted fuel or more accurately negative G fuel. So hold on. So uh, Raphael asked if I could give a better explanation of inverted fuel. Um, and I'm going to do my best to do it unscripted and, and not rambling for 15 minutes. Uh, so to begin with, I'll, I'll show you what the typical, um, and by typical, I mean 99% of the planes out there flying, what they use for the fuel system. This is the uh, root rib for the right wing that's going to be traditional. Um, and on the back of this access plate, you can see the fuel pickup. So it's a hard aluminum line with a little mesh basket on the end, and it's going to sit at the very lowest part of the fuel tank. So it can hopefully get every last drop of fuel, but God help you if you're the kind of person who's flying and needs to get every last drop of fuel. That being said, it's a hard line. So if you were to, it's called an inverted fuel system, but it, inverted, you could still be pulling positive Gs. Let's, let's call it a negative G fuel system. If you were flying upside down for a sustained period of time and negative G situation where your head's pressing up against canopy, this fuel line is gonna be at the highest point in the tank and it's not gonna be able to get any fuel. The inverted fuel system gets rid of that and instead, way up here, it mounts a flop tube, which is what it sounds like. It's a, a long, uh, like, floppy braided fuel line that runs all the way back here, but it goes where gravity goes. So if you are in a negative G situation, it flops to the low point of the tank and is still able to pick up fuel. The modifications that we have to do to make that work are to get rid of the fuel float center that was right here before because it's going to interfere with the flop tube and we move it out here into the second uh, fuel bay where there won't be any, any interference. We have to create some anti-hang-up guides right here so that that tube can't somehow get tangled up in here or get snagged on the nut plates on that access plate. So there'll be another anti-hang-up guide that will kind of go right here and protect against that as well. And then we create this little trap door. And this one I scratched my head a little, about, a little bit about because I just didn't understand how this does anything for me if I'm upside down. That would be the high point of the tank. Uh, if you're going to be doing this kind of flying, you might even be doing this kind of flying, like fly, making a knife edge pass. And if you were to make a knife edge pass on the side that you're, use, that you're counting on the fuel top working for you when you're in a sustained negative G flight, when you're doing this knife edge pass, fuel can rush out of this first bay. And if you do it long enough, it can empty out this first bay. And then when you go inverted, even though the flop tube is where it should be, there might not be any fuel in this bay. And so all this trapdoor does is allows fuel to easily come in. And then in those situations where fuel might want to rush out, it prevents it from rushing out. It's not a perfect seal and you don't want it to be a perfect seal. You just want it to prevent a large volume of fuel from leaving this bay really quickly. That's all that is. And then it's got a little stopper right here so that uh, when you do roll wings level, it doesn't get stuck in that open position and therefore become effective for, ineffective for uh, the next time you do this, your next pass down the show line, if you're that kind of pilot. Uh, which brings up the next point. Do you even need this or who needs this? And the honest answer is only really uh, like high level, I would say, show pilots like aerobatic pilots 
would have any actual use for this. If you do any research on this, what you find out really quickly is even people who thought that they were gonna do most of their flying upside down, and I'm talking like fighter pilots um, who had to build an RV-8 because it flies like a fighter, they find out that, you know what, I actually don't like flying upside down for very long. Um, and it, with a fuel injected engine, they find that they can fly upside down for sometimes up to 20 seconds before they even get a sputter out of the engine. And their tolerance for flying upside down is closer to like five or seven seconds. And so this means nothing. And this also adds a lot of complication if you want to use it to fly 45 seconds upside down. Because um, it's not enough that you can just get fuel, you will lose oil pressure. And so you have to put an inverted oil system on your aircraft. And that's, this is inexpensive to do. It's inexpensive, relatively simple. Uh, it doesn't complicate your life very much. An inverted oil system, on the other hand, is very expensive and it will complicate your life to a high degree because it takes up so much space um, behind the engine in front of the firewall that it becomes very difficult to work on your airplane. And it doesn't just stop there. If you're going to do this for a long time, the seat belts that you have in your plane, even with shoulder harnesses, aren't going to cut it. You're going to need expensive, uncomfortable, ratcheting, aerobatic uh, seat belts to keep your head off of the ceiling. You're still going to have pennies and old french fries going up your nose when you're upside down. But anyways, so is it worth it to do it? Probably not. Why do it now? It's because it's a way to future-proof your airplane. Um, if you do decide someday that you are going to be that guy and you didn't install the flop tube or this modification on the wing, doing it later is extremely difficult. Doing it now is super easy and it costs about $50 more than not doing it. So why not? I mean, you preserve the option to do it later. Will I ever do it? Probably not, right? But um, it's just a good opportunity to kind of get that locked in. And then also as an amateur builder, it's a good opportunity to complicate my work a little bit, do a little bit more fabrication, have to solve some other problems. It just helps me uh, build upon a small and ever growing skill set. That is uh, inverted fuel, as far as I know. <laughs> we'll see. I'll probably never uh, be in a flight uh, paradigm that would actually absolutely require this. Um, but I'll be glad that I did it. So there's that. Hey, that ending was kind of abrupt. So I just wanted to give a quick note on the way out here. A amateur builder. So um, the information that I share with you here is what I was able to gather from my own research and talking to other people who've done it before me, but I'm by no means an expert. Uh, this is what I've come to understand about inverted fuel. Um, when I say, is it worth it to do it? What I meant is, is it worth it to do the whole thing? Uh, that's the probably not part. Is it worth it to do this part right here? Just do the modification in one tank? Absolutely, for all the reasons that I listed. But um, I do think that I'm gonna fly upside down and I might fly once or twice upside down long enough that it, the engine might wanna quit, <laughs> you know? But the reality is uh, probably just a little bit, you know, here and there for fun. So anyways, I, I hope that clears up a little bit of the mystery for you. It cleared up a little bit of the mystery for me. It's how I came to the decision that I wanted to do this, even though I know that it's not something that I'm probably ever going to have a real need for. So to say what he just said, that's inverted fuel as far as I know. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate the support that the channel has gotten. It's been a lot of fun and uh, I'll see you on 73, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. Let's just keep building an airplane.